and this is The End Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. That's right. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip, from the In Show Studios right here in the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a great in-studio guest from the Batman show, Mr. Bruce Wayne. Bruce, how is everything? Oh, man, it's going great. It's going great, Gus. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you bringing me on your show. And... Uh... And uh, I want to say hi to everybody out there in California because they listen to me over there too. And uh, and I just, this is just great for me. I'm telling you, I appreciate it, man. Oh, my pleasure. I know we've talked about it for a little bit. So glad right. that you're able to come in on our last show of the year. So it's a big treat for me. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> well, you got a great show too. Oh well, thank you. As, as you do as well. You know, and I, and I love the. Uh, what people may not know is that uh, you know we, we talk uh, up and on throughout the year, just catch up with each other, and I love all the great stories that you that yeah. you tell me. So I was well, the, the one great story I told you was about Woodstock. Uh, yes, nineteen sixty nine, August fifteenth. That was my birthday, and I was given some tickets uh, to go to Woodstock at the age of thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked my mother. I asked my mother. Uh, if I could uh, go, and she said no, and it was like two 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 weeks uh, uh, before the uh, concert, and so I got some friends together, and we said we were going to stay over at somebody's house, and <laughs> we ended up going on a Thursday, which was on a Friday, which which is the show was going to be. But we got there Thursday night, and it was starting to get packed in, and uh, we got into the about a hundred foot from the stage there, and. Uh, Next morning we woke up and I mean there was thousands of people just looking. I mean looking at. It. I mean it was just something to see as a young kid just turning fourteen uh, on that day. It was just something to see. And uh, first, uh, first they were, they were saying that uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix was going to come out, and of course he couldn't show up at, uh, that day, but he did eventually show up at the last show. And uh, but we got to got to watch and listen to the best uh, you know groups out there like Richie Haven uh, uh, Joe Cochran uh, uh, Janis Joplin uh, uh, Cretans Clare on the Bible they were out there uh, I mean <laughs> this great stars out there I mean it was just it, it was groovy I'm telling you it was, it was something, something to be at and I'll never forget as long as I live best concert I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, was great, it was a great time. And of course, I I didn't, uh, when I got home, <laughs> I was grounded for two months, but I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's amazing because, you know, that definitely is a once in a lifetime. There's no way to replicate it, duplicate it in any way, shape, or form. The talent, the, right. the times. You know, even if you try to do, I know they've done, you know, try to do a Woodstock too, blah, 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 but it's never the same. And for you to have been there, even just setting foot on, on the grass, let alone being there for that whole time, is just a yeah, it was, treasure. It was, just, it was something to see and, and, and something to hear. And, and there were so many people out there, so many, so many uh, great uh, people from, you know, from black to white to whatever. People were all out there. People were just having a good time. And it wasn't just all about gold or anything like that. It was just the music, and it was the time of uh, trying to stop the war. And, and it was just, uh, you had to go in there to really know how, how it was, and playing in the mud and rain, and <laughs> we didn't care. <laughs> we didn't care. We just had fun. And, and I know there's some grand, grandfathers and great-grandfathers that were probably there, too, out there that experienced it just as well as I did. And uh, I was very young, and, of course, they were... They were sort of young at the time, but they probably they probably remember it. Some some people are still out there alive that, that do remember it. And it, you just had to been you seen Janis Joplin coming up on the stage, you know, and and uh, you seen uh, uh, like I said uh, Joe Cochran. I mean, no one knew, even knew Joe Cochran until he came out there. And did he bring a song out there? A little help from my friends. I'm telling you, they that need today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and no no doubt, you know. I know you knew many of the musical groups back then. How, 
influential were they in your personal life? Because you were 13, were you very involved in the music scene at that age? I, I was involved in the music scene before then because I used to listen to uh, Wolfman Jack and Cousin Gracie nice. out of New York City. Yes. And, uh, you know, I was always listening to music. I had, I, my, my parents, well, of course, my dad, he was our DJ on the weekends and he put speakers in all our rooms. <laughs> and so we heard all this music. Every kind of music from the 50s and 60s and 70s, and you know, and it's I left in the 70s. I still was into music and got to really actually, uh, I was immersed in semen and I got to go to a lot of ports in Florida and got to meet the KC and the Sunshine Band before they even got started in a club. Uh, Barry White uh, out of uh, uh, Fat City, New Orleans back then in the 70s, I got to meet him. Uh, I mean, just got to meet all kinds of people. Even, uh, even Tommy Chong met him at the airport in New Orleans. <laughs> 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 uh, he, he was something out. He had run away and away. He went, uh, hey, man, you got any smoke? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a story <laughs> right there. Just so many people that I've, I've met in, in my lifetime. And, and so about five or six years ago here, I started a show on a... Uh, this guy, on the, or this DJ, was out of Liberty, Texas, and he uh, he wanted to do a, you know, because I told him about the stories and stuff that I did. And it was all, like, he said, you know your music, man. You just know that music from, I mean, the way it's been, you know, I just love your platform, the way you play music. He said, I want to get this internet station. And he said, what do you think about internet? I said, that's the place it's going to go. People are going to listen. You want to go where the people are going to be, okay, and and it's this time of the age, that's where it is. It's at the internet right now, the, radio, the internet radio station is blasting out there. And I got over three and a half million listeners from around the world. From around the world. Fantastic. And it's just, uh, you know, it's just amazing how how blowed up it's got. It's got in, uh, it's where it is. Absolutely, absolutely. You know it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I do. You know, it's wonderful when you get... Um, you know, emails or you know, messages uh, from, oh my God. from the people across the, the world. Uh, and, you, and you read the emails I've sent them to you. Yes. It's just amazing how many emails I've got and people that love what I do. And they just they just say, keep on going. And, and you bring back the old days that that uh, we forgot about. And, people, and the DJs out there do not play the music like I play it. You know, they're, right. they're not into the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Right. They're into, you know, the new stuff out there. It, when you get a DJ that knows how to play it exactly the way it was played on the radio and the exact way it was played, you know, you uh, their music and the, people love it. And, you know, and, I, and the, even new artists out there, I, I even got some new artists that I put on the air and, and uh, you know, I try, I help, uh, I try to help these independent bands, you know, that get on the air, to, you know, let somebody hear their music. And uh, just, you know, I, I even met some, you know, some real, real nice people out there, you know, and yep. uh, some, some, my ex, some, uh, some artists were, were back in 1982, <laughs> they won a, uh, you know, uh, won some awards back then, and they, they're, they're trying to do their music again, you right. know, so you get to meet all kinds of people out there, and uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing, it's a lot of work, because <laughs> you do it on Twitter, <laughs> you do it on uh, Facebook, G, uh, Gmail, uh, you name it, there's all, all kinds of sites we get on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think your outreach is fantastic. You know, you, yeah, it, it and, and you came, know in the music, what's the like big that, deal? I, just like I said, when I started it, they said, you know, everybody said, you know, internet's not going to go anywhere. Internet radio, nobody's going to want to <laughs> buy into internet radio. You, well, I proved them wrong. That's right. That's right. We're all proving them wrong. That's right. That's right. Because it's it's uh, it always reminded me of the old arguments about the uh, automobile and the telephone. Oh, these are just fancy fancies. Nothing's going to be. Right. <laughs> they're not going to stick. No one's going to really going to want them. People love a live radio. You and bet. People, you know, you know, these guys they play some of these stations. They just play recordings of music and they and they record their stuff. We play it live play it like it is. That's right. And, that, and, and, and that's the way it, it should be. That's and right. People love it. People love live radio. They do. You know, I think you, you, you hit on something that's very 
uh, you know, very important for me personally. You know, I, I enjoy the live radio because you you get that organic feeling. You get that moment, the truthfulness right there, and you know, with mistakes and all. And I think people that's appreciate right. when that. When I make a mistake, I'll make a mistake. That's it. That's I mean, right. Uh, and the people know that, and they 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 don't they don't turn me off because of it. They, <laughs> right. They know that. Hey, I'm live. I sneeze. I fall. Whatever. <laughs> that's I mean, right. The music <laughs> doesn't play. The <laughs> microphone doesn't work. Right. You know, things like that. I mean, I've had that happen before too. You know, there's, I hate it. I don't like when it happens. But the, but uh, you know what? You know, everybody doesn't care. They want to still listen. That's right. They don't want to listen to it. Because you you know what it, you, know. you know just just from my point of view it it reveals to them hey you know this is an industry like anything else you may see all the pretty stuff when it's all edited out but the live things that's that's yeah, live like, you know Twitter or Facebook it's all live I you mean, bet uh, you know it's uh, so you got to make everything live and that's what people love they want to hear it when it happens the minute it happens you know and and the same as news you know it's the uh, that's, you know, they're right there on the scene on, on the news thing, you know. You know, this is that's that's our generation now. So, and uh, and I want to keep it alive. It needs to stay alive, and it should never die. Right. You know, I wanted to ask you. That, that's a good point that you bring up right now. You know, that's how things are now. How different were they when you first started? Is it? Uh, do you do the, your show the same? Have you adapted it somehow? Or no, is it... I did it. I did it the same. Uh, but the thing I did change was. Didn't make it as the yesteryears of music, and uh, you know, and it was a catchy sound. Right. And, I, and I said, you know, the Batman show. See, I'm, that is my real name. Is my name, real name is Bruce Wayne. Yes. I was named after my mother. She used to <laughs> read comic books, and she was a she had a rheumatic fever in the, in the hospital, and they used to give her comic books, and it was Batman comic books she used to read all the time. Nice. And she said, when I, you know, when I uh, have a child, I'm going to name him Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got my name and, and if you had a, you had a name Bruce Wayne wouldn't you name it the Batman show of the yesteryears well of course you bet <laughs> <laughs> that's a catchy thing right that's right that's right you know, but, you're lucky you should have named you Batman I experience because I knew I knew the music I knew every there's songs out there that I get my emails from man I haven't heard this song in 30 years I haven't heard this song in 50 years you know right. I mean it is they they just love it. They 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 love it. And I I used to listen to it. Yes. I mean, as a kid, I used to. And my brothers and sisters used to get annoyed, you know, about the music being played in the rooms and stuff. But I, I used to sit back and love it. All right. My dad used to do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And what's what's fascinating, you know. When, when we've talked and you told me about your Woodstock connection, that you right. have that personal. You know, experience with these great and, and artists. I, I do have a personal, and I do a show on that once in a while. I do a, a Woodstock show, and I, and I have live sounds from Woodstock, actually from Woodstock itself, and all the artists and everything. It, it just, all oh, people just love it. You know, just pe people say, oh, wow, man, he's bringing us back to Woodstock. You know, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Are, 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 you, are you still in touch with any of the friends that you went with that night, that day? I. Uh, a couple, uh, a couple guys. Uh, I don't know what happened to my other friends. Now, the woman that gave me the tickets, her name was Liz Zarelli. I don't know whatever happened to her. She was a protester back then, you know, in the days. Her husband actually got killed in Vietnam. Okay. She had a little boy, and I lost touch with their people, and I don't know what happened to her, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but trying to find her, I don't know what happened to her exactly, but, uh, she was, she was, she was a real, real nice lady. Really a nice lady, she, even though she, you know, people don't know what hippies are. And, right. Uh, <laughs> hippies are people who live on the floor, eat on the floor, and, you know, just do everything on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they right. don't have any furniture. <laughs> they got big cushions, you know. Yeah, just right. Like the, you know, just like the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, nice and easy. And, uh, and that's how she lived. Nice. Nice. And how many of them, uh, how many friends did you go with? Four, five? How many tickets did you have that No, day? it was just, uh, well, she gave us four tickets, so I had, it was just me and, t and three other guys. Okay. And all the yeah. same age, you're all uh, junior high age? Uh, yeah, yeah, we were, uh, well, one of them was a little older than uh, he, he was the one that drove us up there. Oh, nice. He just got his, uh, just got his driver's license. license. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we took her. <laughs> yeah, we saved her money. And see, I was supposed to have been at his house, and he was supposed to have been at my house. And my mother called me on my birthday at his house, and I wasn't there. Oh. <laughs> and I, I probably forgot about it because my mother wouldn't call me on my birthday. Oh, no. And I probably forgot about it. When she, when she heard I wasn't there, and he wasn't here. She, she added up both of them. She said, "They're at Woodstock. I'm gonna kill them." <laughs> <laughs> the new she knew exactly where you're at. <laughs> she knew exactly where we was. My dad was all cool about it. He says, "Well, he's back. He's not. He's not dead." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. But even my my dad told me, he says, "How can you argue with a kid? He, I mean, he's famous. He went to Woodstock. I mean, you know how many people were there?" And then he told my my, my, uh, my mother. Right. It was thousands of people, and he was there. That's right. He'll be. He'll have that memory forever. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bruce. You know, I got to take a quick commercial break, but uh, love the stories. I know you got many more, many more. So I'm yeah, looking many, forward many to more. it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bruce. Again, hang in there. I'm gonna take a quick break. Hey, All right, buddy. All right. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. And we have in-studio guest Mr. Bruce Wayne from The Batman Show. He's been telling us some of his childhood stories, of course. One of my favorites is the one where he went to Woodstock. And, of course, he came back to us to be able to tell us that great story. But we're going to have more of him in our next segment. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. Good to be back with you today. That's right. We have another great show. We have in-studio guest, Mr. Bruce Wayne from The Batman Show. Bruce, again, loving the stories there, my friend. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, like I said, I've met a lot of artists in my life. Uh, uh, met KC, Sunshine Band, and, and I think was, the name of the club was uh, called The Brothers Club in, in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. I was, I was I was taken there by a cab, and they had two bands. One one band was downstairs, and another band was upstairs. And upstairs was KC and them, and got actually to meet them guys before they even got on radio. And uh, actually, I think they already knew they were famous already, or didn't famous anyway. Uh, but uh, I actually got to meet the guy and, and uh, shook his hand and everything. And I told him my name is Bruce Wayne, and he says, and, you know, and he says. He goes, Bruce Wayne? He said, well, that's my name. My, my name is, uh, what, what was his name? Uh, 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 I forgot his name now. Well, he's got the Wayne in it. <laughs> it was Wayne Casey, something like that. I can't remember what his first name was, but uh, yeah, I got to action meet him and, and the whole band in there at the time. And uh, it, was, it was cool because about two months later, I heard it on the radio and they were playing Get Down Tonight. Nice. Uh, that's what the. Uh, so man, I met them guys, and I wish I had gotten their autograph, <laughs> which I didn't know they were going to actually be there, you know, uh, be famous, but they, right. they knew they were going to go somewhere because they were really good. Right, all right. Then, so was, uh, how, how was their sound in in the nightclub? Similar, or did it change well, a few man, months just later? Like, just like you, were, you was listening to it on the radio. They, 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 had, it, they had it perfectly down, down the path. Them, them guys, they're still touring out there. Right now, they're still touring. Uh, with, uh, the last I heard was with the Welsh people, and they were supposed to go to Australia and play over there in uh, Australia, I think in April or something like that, with uh, the group called War. Remember, remember the group of War? I in do. The 70s? Yeah, I do. Yeah, they're going to be playing. Man, them guys were going to. They were our, they were our black, black, black eyed peas. No, that's right. Seventies. <laughs> 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 they were our black eyed peas in the seventies because. They just had that sound, you know. Right. And so, uh, you know, these, these these guys are great, and they still, and they're all still out there doing it. They're still all out there touring, and maybe I'm helping them do it. I don't know. I, you know, I try to let people know what's going on with these these groups, and and they, you know, let them, you know, let them, you know, want people to hear the music we used to listen to, you know, right back in our days. Right. And so, uh, you know, these guys are still getting it and still doing it. And boy, what do you think about Kiss being a, uh, going to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? <laughs> I think that's fantastic. You know, sometimes I'm amazed about some of the people that get in there. And then, of course, like always, like everybody, you realize, why aren't they in there? Or why isn't so-and-so in there? Well, what are, what right. are you know, what's the panel missing about well, these even, great artists? They've been waiting too long. Right? And uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy for the guys because they, they really were good back in the 70s. 
Oh, I mean, they're they're still fantastic, and I, I got to see oh, them. Yeah. I got to see them when they did a benefit show about uh, I think a year or two ago. Uh, right. Out here, I think it was at the was it the whiskey, the Rosky, uh, Roxy, one of those two, and uh, yeah. they had a. It was for uh, the veterans, and uh, right. you know, the, the band members came up and they just you know blew it out. Man. It was fantastic. <laughs> they, well, I had tickets for the for Kiss when they first came out in Houston, Texas, right here at the Summit. And I would, I, I mean, I had fun with loads of tickets. I waited in line for, oh my God, for hours and hours to get these tickets. And then I had to be called out, go, actually go to California to catch a boat over there in California. And I couldn't make it to the show, but I heard it was, I heard it was awesome. Yeah. And I would have loved to have been there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would have loved to have been there. That's when they were torn with sticks. Right. The time they were torn with sticks at the time. And then I got, I actually did go, go see a concert in, in in uh, Houston here, the Hero of the Doll concert. Yes. Errol Smith and Nazareth. Man, that out. That, that was a concert too. Nice. That was that was that was a good, that was a good, good concert back then. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is what I, this is what I do. I played music back in the days, what, the way it was played. You know, from the fifties to the sixties to the seventies into the eighties. You know, and uh, people say, you know. And I just love it, you know. One, one of my biggest shows are is the '60s show, of course. And then my other biggest show, the real big show, I, I want to say it's probably one of the biggest shows, is the disco show. I bring the disco music out that nice. people ain't never heard in years. You know, right. If you lived in the '70s and you knew the disco music, you knew how it was played. And I and I and I went to a lot of clubs in back in the '70s, and I heard the way it was played. And I play it. I play it just like they did back in the clubs. Right. And, and people love that. They yes. Love that. You, you know what I find you know, about uh, that era, that that music. You know what you're talking about, yeah. '60s, '70s, and '80s. Right. I, you know, I find right. that that it was it was a something new, a, a revealing of something that never existed before, because it was different from the music from, of course, right. you know, the '50s and, and and prior to that. And everything right. now seems to be going retro. Well, if you look at right. the, the 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 books, the the movies, the, the music, like you were mentioning, oh, yeah. the, the discos, well, the, the, 70s, the it was 70s fantastic. Was the era of all music? Yes. I mean, you had you had disco, you had rock and roll, you had R and B, you had southern rock, you had the country, southern country, rock country. Uh, I mean, you had it all back then in the seventies. You, you know what? It was the era. It was the most played music. In, in the era. You, you know, and you, but you look at the groups, you, you see who, who was still working. You still had everyone from like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all the way to Leonard Skinner, all the oh, way to the all, Stones, all everybody. Right. You know, right. you know that, that, that well, what a I great era. Billy Bowman back then, too. <laughs> and, you know, back in the 70s, too, with, with all the shows that they used to have in the 70s. Right. If you, you look at today's music, who are still the big money makers? Rolling Stones, yeah. uh, you know the Police from the '80s, uh, you know all right. these all these singers who were, you know, they should have gone, you know, quietly into the night are still right. rocking it hard. They're still doing it. Uh, matter of fact, I put a guy on the radio here just recently. Uh, well, uh, actually, a while back, and got to actually meet him by uh, uh, David Ruffin Jr., which was his dad was just an awesome singer. 60s and 70s too yes and uh <laughs> and uh got to meet this guy and his name was Michael J. Calhoun now Michael J. Calhoun is one of the members of the Daz band yes. this guy has started his stuff up again and he's got some awesome music out there and you gotta get him on your show one of these days <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely I love it yes you know, yeah, yeah yeah and so you know this, these are the people that are I've been, you know, it's been attracting to me, uh, you know, independent artists out there, and these guys, these guys I put on the radio are not, they don't suck, they good, they're, they're absolutely good. No, no auto tuning there. I put on the radio, it, it sucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, every time I get somebody that, that wants to be aired on the radio, they're all, you know, they're all great, and uh, and they're and these these independent bands are just, I mean, they they work hard with they do. I mean, they, you know, they don't have no labels. Uh, they, they do their own thing. They do their own recordings. They they sell their own music, and that's the way it is in the record business now. I mean, that's that's that's. It used to be where you know you go up there and well sign a contract with you. Uh, here's 
$2 million and, you know, and, and uh, give me bus and all this other stuff. It ain't like that anymore. You know, right. It's not like that. The, the music industry is money making. If you ain't making the money, you're not going to get it you know, in a label. So it's, uh, you know, it's just, uh, but so these, a lot of these bands are, went independent. Even the older bands just went back to independent, you know, doing the independent thing now. Right. So they're not, you know, they're not looking for any labels. They're, just, they're doing their own thing. Yeah, they're more, doing great. And yeah, you know, more more control of uh, you know their sound, their music, who they are. You know, I, I find it yeah. fascinating, and it's, it's a great point how, how the that you made about the evolution of the music industry. Nowadays, right. they want you to come in with fans, a fan base, before they even look at you. Where before it was about the music, getting the music right. out there, and then you know the people will come. Now, now it's now it's about it's all about uh, how many fans you have and how many people you got listening to you and how many records you sold. Yeah, exactly. You know, how many t-shirts you bought or you know, sold or whatever. <laughs> Your hits yeah, on uh, uh, Reverb Nation or whatever. Yeah. What, what they're doing, but uh, it's woken up a lot of bands out there to go independent on their own. Absolutely, you know, because it, it gives you again, you know, what we were talking about. You know, being in a live show and having that intimate touch, you get out there, you put your music out there, fans get to know you. You're the one handling your Facebook, your Twitter, your your YouTube account. They get to personally know me, and they get to, they they go, they go, oh, wow, I'm talking to the DJ Bruce Wayne. I'm you know this is, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe you wouldn't believe how many people I walked into. I go to Corpus Christi. Yes, and I and I see people walking around with Batman shirts. You're the guy on the Batman show, you know. I, <laughs> I, how did you know that? And right. You know, oh, I've seen it on the internet somehow, and uh, you know, and, and just go to Houston and go to San Antonio. And, uh, it doesn't matter where I went. I, I mean, I went across country not too long ago, and the people knew who I was. You know, and it's just. It's just amazing that people get everything on the internet now. Yeah, you bet. You know, and I, and you know, and I know the, the the big attraction is that you know your music. You play the stuff that people remember and makes them feel good. Exactly. I played the way they, the way they, they they played it back then. Um, I'm starting to get into doing the little '90s now, but uh, my era was back in back in them days. Then, and and, uh, and it, you know, I wasn't. I, I was born in '55. Right. But, you know. I, I remember the music my dad played. He had all the records. He had he turned on the radio and turned. You know, hey, you never heard this. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. I, I mentioned the, to a few, some of the older people. Uh, hey, do you know who Napoleon Fourteen was? And they go, No, oh, who was that? That's the guy. That's the band that played. The coming to take me away. Who to the funny farm? <laughs> 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 that was a song back in the six, uh, the sixties. You know, so. I mean, there's just so many. There's all kinds of uh, things were played back in the '60s, uh, from comedy to uh, you know, mu music. Was the, the early '60s were all orchestra music. A lot of orchestra music came in. Right. You had uh, uh, Buddy Holly that died in 1959, and he came in with the uh, "Raining in the Heart" song, and you know that was played into the '60s. And I mean, it was just. Uh, a lot of music went from the 50s to the 60s, and then went from the 60s to the 70s, and it just, it just, it just kept on rocking, you know. And then we, it came out with that new sound in the 70s, which was disco, and it was just, uh, hey, what is that, you know? And I, I, and I've looked up all the people that started actually disco, and you know who the main man was? No, who was that? Disco, Mr. Barry White. Barry White, nice. Barry White was one, and I actually got, fortunately got to meet him in Fat City, New Orleans, years ago in the 70s, and he was a, he was a nice guy, big guy, but he can, man, he can sing, he can put that voice out, they, can, they, they made him girls now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bet. He did, he did his thing back then, and he, he was, he, he was the king of, uh, of uh, disco music, as far as I'm concerned. That's right. Plus, you know, Donna Summers was, was the queen of disco. Oh, yes, you, you bet. Know, lost her this, this year. I think it was this year we lost her. Yes, yes, I believe She got in the Rock and Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah, she had so a fantastic time. You know, I was kind of and you know what's funny? happy they did. You know what? I think you're absolutely right. You know, a couple things. I know I always tell everyone, if you ever walk up to the door and hear little Barry White come from the other side, don't you dare knock. <laughs> <laughs> He was a he was a 
amazing guy. He, he was born here in, uh, in, in Galveston, Texas, if nobody didn't know that. And he was raised in uh, South L.A. Look so, at that. But, he got in a little trouble back then when he was a kid. Uh, well, kind of, well, 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 just par, par, par for the course, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bruce, I, I got to take a quick commercial break. We're at commercial break time, so perfect timing. Uh, what, okay, buddy. What, what a high note to end. I'm Barry White. All right. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the intro. We have in-studio guest Mr. Bruce Wayne of the Batman Show. Again, he's been sharing with us all his wonderful knowledge of music and giving us some of his great insights to all these wonderful arrows and of course letting us know boy he's talked to a lot of people early on isn't that fantastic who wouldn't have uh, liked to have known the casey and the sunshine band just a few months before they really hit it big isn't that fantastic what a wonderful story all right well we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll have a lot more of him in our next segment so you hang in there we'll be right back and this is the intro and I'm your host, Gus Summers. That's right, we have a great in-studio guest, Mr. Bruce Wayne from the Batman Show. Boy, he's been giving us all kinds of great stories and insight. Bruce, again, just want to say thank you for uh, taking the time out to uh, do the show. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, if you notice, I play the uh, Batman tune on there. Yes. On my show, if you go on my show, uh, a lady, this is another interesting story, a lady when I had uh, MySpace at the time, she heard me playing that tune, and she gave me permission because her uncle used to own own that song, the Batman Batman song tune, and she gave me permission to use that tune. So that's what I did. Fantastic. <laughs> that, was, that was many years ago. I don't know if she's still alive or not, but she was the uh, the the owner of that uh, of that song at the time because uh, her, her uncle had already passed away. Yes. She just my show. She supposed to do it too. Look at that! Look at that! Fantastic. Ta ta talking about your show, that's a that's a great um, great segue. I wanted uh, you to mention the time and uh, where people can uh, you know find your show, your Facebook, and all that. Well, mostly mostly I've been doing it on every Sunday, but here lately I've been on it almost almost uh, all week this week. But uh, I, I, I think I'll be having a show this afternoon from six, from six to ten. But have to check in and make sure that's if, if that's correct or not. And I usually post it on my page, uh, and uh, you can catch me on. I have a, actually two pages. I got a fan page called the Batman Show, which is on Facebook, and then I got you know uh, uh, Bruce Wayne KKRP, which is on my Batman uh, Facebook page too. And then I got Twitter at KKRP Batman. And then if you want to get me on my radio show, just go to www.thebatmanshow.com. Nice. You're right there. And if you want to send me an email, just send me to Bruce Wayne, I mean, uh, Batman Bruce, <laughs> 41 at gmail.com. Beautiful. I'm there too. And uh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just Google me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Batman Show, you, you'll find it, I promise you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? You know, you know, I love when you can. You know, you're at the point where it says, oh, "Just, just Google me," or you know, just put yeah, put, put this yeah, in the search engine. Know, you'll find me. Google me, but now you can't. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, uh, it's amazing what the, the internet teaches you. I mean, if there's, you know, it, uh, you can learn about a lot of things on, on different different people. Uh, and this is why I do a lot of the shows and I, I talk about a lot of the artists even back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. You know, it's just amazing how these guys got started, how, uh, what got them into music. And, and uh, they just have, they all have an interesting story. They all, every, each and every one of them. And it's just, that's, that's the reason why I did, this is why I did a show called The Yesterday Years of, of the 50s, 60s, and 70s and 80s. And so, you know, so people... No, hey, uh, hey, I heard this on, on the Batman show. He said that this certain certain person, you know, and they get the story, of, you know, the true story, you know, because I, 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 you know, I look it up. And if I don't know it, I look it up, or I didn't meet this person, whatever, I still look it up and give them the interesting story of, of the, each and every uh, artist out there. And, and, and even some of the ones I, uh, I met personally. So, you know, that's, that's why uh, people love this show, even the young people. Even the young people love, you know, when I was playing the 70s uh, disco song one time, 
I had uh, three or four kids call me up. Hey, is that a new sound? It, it's, that, it, that, that's an awesome song. Uh, no, it's been played in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> is that a new group? <laughs> <laughs> and they love, that, they love that disco sound, you know? And they, yeah, you bet. And they, and these kids love this rock and roll that I play that they, their parents used to listen or grandfathers used to listen to. Right. So, you know, it, that's, why, that's why it's an amazing show. And, and, and of course, I get people from that love Batman, period. I mean, they just love Batman. I talk about the, you know, thing that's going on with Batman movies and stuff like that sometimes too. And I have so many fans of that that's a Batman fan, you know. And of course, I got oh, that's another thing too. I got a truck <laughs> that has the Batman in the front of my hood and the back of my my hood with with, with the thing on it that says uh, the Batman show. Nice. And uh, I got sponsors, got sponsors for my my show and. And people, and my, of course, my name's on the side of the door, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I've seen the picture. Yeah, is, is and, that uh, the picture you posted on Facebook? Oh, you, yeah. yeah they, you post, they, you're yeah, standing they, on the back they, bumper? Yeah, you know, on Facebook, so. Yeah. You see, if you go on my Facebook, you'll find it. Just look at <laughs> my pictures, and you can see you can see the, the Batman truck there that I have. And, uh, and I started that when I first started my first show, and I had one truck, and, of course, I uh, had problems with it. And of course, now I've got a newer one now, and so it's so what I go around driving around in. <laughs> so if you see me, that's me. <laughs> hey, well, you know, that's, uh, there you are, great adversary. Well, you wouldn't be surprised how many cops and, and people pulled me over. I've had a lot of police pull me over. Say, is that really your real name? I show my driver's license. They go, "Holy <laughs> crap!" <laughs> <laughs> well, holy bat! <laughs> oh, holy bat! <laughs> holy bat, Bruce! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they just uh, it just amazes them and, and then, of course I got cards that I pass out and, you know let people get on the show and let them know about you know the show and everything and they just they just love it they, they just, like I said I, wherever I go people take videos of me or take pictures of me or you know they just go they just can't believe that this you know that I'm doing this and uh, right and, and you know and it, I've never had a negative on, on anybody telling me you're, no, you're being stupid, you know, or anything like that. Right. It's always been a good thing. Right. I, I think Batman symbolizes, you know, things that are good. So if you're associated well, with Batman, Batman. I had it on uh, Mr. Adam West's page the other day. He's got, a, he's got a new Facebook out there. Okay. And he just had, and yeah, I just had it on there and told him he's still the Batman. No. <laughs> he's the original Batman. That's he right. still love that guy. He still love him. You wouldn't believe how many people. He's got like millions of people on his on his page, and he still and hey, he still did the little dance. He's got a video on there. He does a little dance that he did back in the Batman uh, in Robin show back in the sixties. He still does a little dance. Uh, the bat, the bat yeah. huh? the bat the the uh, uh, you know, the bat tusi. <laughs> does the bat tusi. <laughs> still getting it out there, I, I, I have uh, oh man. It, Guy's in, in pretty good shape. I mean, for his age, he's he, he looks very good. Right. And I, I and I hope he was listening in too because I told him I told him about the show and everything. I was like, well, I love the thing. I don't know if he, he read it or not. He, he's got probably so many people he he uh, he reads things from. But right. Hopefully he's listening in. Yeah, exactly. Adam West, you're still you're still the man. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> the original Batman. You bet. <laughs> but anyway. I just get I get people to call me. Uh, I get people to uh, that text me. People that email me. Uh, and like I said, you've seen some of the emails I've got, and it's just uh, it's just amazing. That people just love it. They yes. just love what I do. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, and that I'm going to keep doing it until I until I can't do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, you know what? What did I ask you? Of you know of of all the music you know from from each decade. Were there some artists that really jumped out at you, and you said, "Wow, you know, th th these are my favorite, or these are my top five? Well, actually, all of them are my, my top five. I mean, they, nice. Everyone that, that played back in the days, uh, always uh, to me, is always a history to me to how they how they got started. And it, it, there's not really a favorite. Uh, I mean, I I have some songs that are favorites, but as band groups, I, I love them all. They, they're all great. They're right. all great what they do, and, and it, it's not easy to, to get where they were, you know. And so that's the way I look at it. 
Yes. Uh, it's not it's not easy to get because uh, I used to, I started a band years ago and it wasn't easy at all. But we never really got anywhere with it. Uh, we we played in some pretty ba- uh, famous things and stuff, but we didn't get we didn't get where we wanted to get with it. But but it's hard. It's it's very hard to do what they're doing out there. And I and I, I praise each one each one of out there, even the, the ones that are restarting back out there again and doing their thing again because. Being on the road and, and all that, yeah, I know it's got to be hard on them. Because yeah, I've I drove on the road in a, in a truck, so I uh, <laughs> can imagine how it is even in a bus. Right. So, hey, I actually got to meet some of these uh, famous people on, on uh, when I was a truck driver. I drove over the road and got a lot to meet a lot of uh, famous people out there, like uh, Loretta Lynn, uh, uh, George Strait, uh, uh, people that are out there touring all over the road, uh, the Flock of Seagulls. Uh, uh, just uh, all kinds of bands that were out there on the road. Up, you, you see their big bus, and you, you know there's somebody famous on these big buses. So you, that's how you actually get to meet them and talk to them right there at the truck stops. So, and that's why I am an tr- ex truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> so, so seaman, uh, emergency seaman, and ex truck driver, and now a radio DJ. Hey, <laughs> hey, don't, don't, don't you love how life takes those turns? Yeah, but isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, who would know? You know, first I wanted to be a oh, fireman. I wanted I, to be a sp- my mother, astronaut. My mother loved music and everything. I wish yeah. she was around to see what I'm doing now. Right. She, she always told me because uh, when I I didn't know what I didn't know what was my name. My, my name was Bruce Wayne. Right. I went to cash a check in the bank, <laughs> <laughs> and they said, uh, "How much? How much uh, millions you want, Mister Mister Wayne?" And I said. <laughs> What are you talking about? You know, Bruce Wayne from the Batman show. <laughs> I said, oh, I never realized my name was Bruce Wayne. <laughs> At first I told her, I said, let me, let me see that check. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, names? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that sounds <laughs> about right. <laughs> I'll take it all cash. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me what what do you have on uh, coming up for your shows uh, or your, your coming up show? What, what are you gonna be spotlighting? Uh, this Sunday, I'm gonna play uh, uh, the '80s. Okay. So bring you back to the '80s, the way it was played back in the '80s when uh, when uh, video killed the radio star. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's right. It did. It killed the radio star back then, and uh, you know, uh, uh, MTV came out. And uh, you had all these music videos coming out, and it just, uh, it just, uh, it was amazing. It's an amazing story that I tell about that, dude. Yeah, and, you, uh, so we're going to bring back the 80s this week. You know, that's, you know, that, that's fantastic. You know, I, I yeah, love it. From, from, uh, from 4 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that would be, let's see, that's, uh, uh, what time is it? That's your time, uh, 2 o'clock. Your time and yes. then uh, five o'clock Eastern time. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I'm talking about MTV. Every, every Sunday, every Sunday. Every Sunday, fantastic. You know, when you mentioned MTV, I remember that. Uh, yep. I would tell everyone. You know, I grew up in a great time because everything was new again. You know, a lot of the great movies I saw in theaters, a lot of the great television, right. a lot of great music, and MTV. Right. I was there right. at the beginning. <laughs> You know, when it was just a little TV show, when, you know, um, one of those obscure channels, Richard Blade was the host. And, you know, you, would, you, know, you would run to, uh, you know, catch it because you would see all the you know, latest videos and hear all the, the, the newest songs. Yeah, there, was what, there was one of them on there that uh, made the uh, most video of the, of the decade, actually, in the 80s. And that was a group called AHA. Oh, you bet. That Take on me. Yes, but, uh, they're they, still they, very. I think uh, I think they're from Finland or something, and they're they're still very big over there. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're still. They're, they're, I don't know if they're still doing their thing or not, but yeah. uh, they they made they made their money on that one record. Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny is that um, that video. I always tell friends because I'm a, I'm a big movie guy too, so I love movies, and uh, I tell them, you ever see a movie called Altered States with um, William Hurt? Go. They have that very scene. They have that very scene in there. When oh, he, really? yeah, he's pounding in the hallway because I don't know. Uh, well, it's it's the movie's thirty years old, but uh, you know, right. when when he's going through his transformation, he's in the middle of the hallway, 
and he is, you know, being transformed, and he's hitting the wall side to side, and oh, okay. and he and he transforms back. And I said, "Hey, I've seen that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then we had the back of, back of the future songs, and uh, you know, uh, 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 what do you call? Uh, oh yeah, come on, Ghostbusters, you know. Oh, yeah. Ghostbusters! You had music for the Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, uh, you had, uh, you, uh, but the, you know who was who was the very first. And when when did the uh, MTV actually come out? Do you know? Uh, what what year? Yeah. Or, or what what show? I believe it was eighty three, wasn't it? Eighty four? I know it was 82. back in eighty two. Okay. 82. Look at that. August of eighty two, and uh, it was the uh, video killed or video star was the very first song that played on on on, radio, uh, on their show. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> I remember and uh, Mickey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine. <laughs> All those great songs, Bruce. Bruce, I've reached the end of my show, but uh, right. the, the, you did exactly what you you do on your shows. You took us all the way back. It was fantastic. and kept us back there. Well, y'all keep on listening, and, and uh, you know, all I want to say is love, peace, and music. That's all I say every time I get off the air. Love, peace, and music. I love it. I love it. Bruce, again, yeah, thank, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Anytime, Jess. All right. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. And we had in-studio guest Mr. Bruce Wayne from The Batman Show. And, of course, you can find him on all those great social media sites. All you have to do is type in Bruce Wayne, The Batman Show, and all those great links will come up. And, of course, you know, visit us at theinshow.com where you'll be able to hear this great interview once again and find out everything that we have done, are doing, and are going to do. And look for us on those uh, great social media sites as well, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube. Look for us there as we try to... Uh, maintain a great presence and love connecting with our you know our fans and friends so ladies and gentlemen of course gus has left the building